This happens to 42% of the printers we tested. 3D printer inconsistent extrusion problems, some call it something else, whatever the name, it makes ugly prints. In this episode, we're looking at these kinds of patterns in particular, and I made this special model which is just flat faces, but comes out with a wood grain pattern. These all have the same underlying problem. And now they're all gone with just one change. Now don't get your hopes up, I only tested this solution on my printer so far, but we'll patch other ones, at least the ones with printed extruders. As you may know, I asked my awesome followers to print these models and report back the findings. This wood like texture showed up in 42% of the cases. First I want to show you the process to identify what causes these issues in the first place, because almost nobody knows how, and then fixing it will become more obvious. These are no issues, they've been there for many years, but I haven't seen it completely fixed really and it'll be obvious why later. In my previous video I showed all the things I tried, pretty much all I could find online I tried already. You can print these patterns if you haven't done so already, so we can root cause the problems together as we go through the video. We're focusing only on this issue for this episode and there are many other problems printers can have which I won't be able to cover here. How do we identify extruder issues? Well, ghosting repeats with every sharp corner. XY motion problems with every layer. Z wobble with every couple millimeters. Bad PID tuning with every minute or so. I'm now looking for problems that occur repeatedly at the extruder, mainly motion related. This is where this shape comes in. We need a simple shape, an extrusion with flat faces. For this shape, the amount of material required for every layer is a little bit less than the layer below it, hence the slope. I'm printing with no infill because that can add variations and I don't want that. I've only got the walls or a spiral vase mode in this case. So if there is a pattern that repeats after a fixed amount of filament is extruded, say it repeats every 10 millimeters of extrusion, then at some layer height where the perimeter is a multiple of 10 millimeters, this pattern will align with itself exactly and it will align on the next layer as well and then slowly run out of alignment, which is exactly what we see here. The pattern aligns between layers here and we can count how many times it repeats, 13 times in this case then goes out of alignment and comes back into alignment, only now it repeats one time less than before, and indeed I count 12. I've got a cone here where you can see how the pattern repeats all the way around. How this helps is that now we know that this pattern repeats with filament extrusion and doesn't have anything to do with any of the other axes. You can shine a light through and see how the wall is thicker and thinner, so it's not lateral movement and doesn't repeat on the vertical axis, meaning it comes from the extruder. And now the important part is that I can now measure this distance, and see this is about 9.1 millimeters. I can measure across 4 of them and get an average to be more precise. Or I can measure the entire perimeter and divide by 13. Either way, we're getting about 9.1 millimeters. Now I want to walk back to how much filament that is. I'll have to look at the g-code. Looks gibberish, but it's actually not that hard to understand. I'll take one line, doesn't matter which, because they're all the same section size. This is an almost horizontal line. It's one of these, doesn't matter which. Goes from x99.45 to x144.238, meaning about 44.8 millimeters and it extrudes 7.38 millimeters of filament for this line. Now, if it takes 7.38 millimeters of filament to print a 44.8 millimeters long line, then to repeat my 9.1 millimeter pattern, it'll take 1.5 millimeters of extruded filament. And now I'm up to something. What I need to find is what in the extruder repeats every one and a half millimeters. And what do you know, does the gear circular pitch? To extrude one and a half millimeters, it rotates one tooth exactly, and this may be what's causing the pattern. I did leave out a few details, such as the flow rate and the pitch diameter difference at the large teeth versus the small teeth, which cancel out to some extent in this case. My measurements also have some error, but I'm only looking for a rough estimate and this is good enough for me. Now that's the theory, which I now need to put to the test. 
I have to lose the thief machine here. One option is to reverse the gear, which I've tried here, so the other acts as an idler. Another option is to replace this other gear with a simple bearing like this, which I've also tried. And guess what, the pattern is gone in both cases. We have the root cause figured out. And when you look back, it wasn't that hard, was it? Just a bit of math. So why haven't all the bright minds tried this before? Anyways, these are called hub gears. Because of this rounded teeth, which bite into the filament and push it down into the hot end. At this end we have these spur gears, which are these teeth that mesh together like so. If we look at the design, and I'll use my prototype extruder here just because it's easier to look inside, we have two gears that mesh here. The reason they mesh here, and this is where the name dual gear extruder comes from, is because now the gears synchronize and both work together on pushing the filament down. Without the meshing, only one of them would be pushing the filament. We call that a single gear extruder. And the other gear is usually replaced with a bearing because it doesn't need the tiny teeth anymore. The problem is that with a single gear, there's a high risk that it'll start slipping on the filament and it slowly grinds through it until it can't push it in any direction. That's when you get a jam. The printer thinks it's printing, but the material won't come out of the nozzle, so your print is ruined. And that's why this dual gear system exists. Now, these spur gears require very very precise alignment. You take them a bit out of alignment and you get an even backlash which is when there's a little gap, so they don't rotate perfectly in sync. One of them sometimes lags a tiny bit behind and sometimes rotates a tiny bit faster to catch up. This play happens with every tooth, which is every one and a half millimeters as we've seen. And that's fine, we could align the gears, except we can't, because you see, the gears have to press against each other and bite into the filament so the filament doesn't slip. And we don't know how much they'll bite, because it depends on the filament. Some are stiffer, some are softer. So then what we do is we allow one of the wheels to move a little bit back and forth. I'll show you on this other extruder. There's a grab screw with a spring inside that lets the wheel move to accommodate the filament. So you see, we can have a wheel that moves here and at the same time stays fixed in place. Not with this kind of design anyways. So I'd call this a design flaw, or a trade-off if you will. Imagine moving inside a triangle, where you can opt for better grip, accommodate more filament types, or improve the print surface. And you can choose where you want to be, but can't have all at once. Oh, and don't forget to boop the like button if you find this video useful. Ideally, we change this design to something else, but I don't have a different design here. So what I've done on this extruder is I've tried various positions for this wheel where I tilt it a little bit this way or that way and see if the patterns go away. This is by no means an ideal solution, but does seem to work. And of course the pattern goes away when the gears are so far apart that they stop meshing, but then only one gear pushes the filament down and risks getting a jam. The pattern also goes away when I rotate the wheel a little bit in the other direction. Now here I get a good grip and no pattern, but there's a high risk of having issues with flexible filament which gets squeezed way more in between the gears, and with the spur gears now closer together, there might not be enough pressure on the filament and it could slip. This is still better for regular filament which I use most of the time, and I'll keep around the old part just in case I want to print flexibles. So this fix will be available as an update for my old pit stop extruder with this modified idler door because many people are using it. Now it looks like a significant portion of Prussian 3s printers have this issue as well on their stock extruder which hasn't been fixed. I mean issue 602 was very popular before it got closed and if you're needing guidance you're invited to join the issue 602 wasteland discord server. An ingenious solution. I mean, they do what they can, but it's not great for the people who pay the premium for a printer that's supposed to make perfect prints. Some say issue 602 is something else entirely, could be a combination of different problems, I have no idea. Anyways, let's still try patching the Mark 3S. I made a potential fix here that could work, marked with an X for experimental, and I'll let you guys test it because I don't use that stock extruder anymore. Might not be ideal for very flexible filaments though, just keep that in mind. 
And of course, this is not limited to Prusa printers. Issues have been reported on Voron printers, Bontek extruders, and E3D's Hammer extruders. The best of the best. But to clarify, this issue doesn't show up all the time, even for the same extruder model. I have nothing against any of these products. I'm just looking at what people submitted, which may or may not be accurate observations, and I'm trying to make some sense of what's going on. You could very well buy two seemingly identical printers and only one would have this issue. So you can print the models and see for yourself if yours has it or not. Where this doesn't show up is on single gear extruders. So Prusa Mini is not affected by this. Reason why a Mini will generally print better than the more expensive Mark 3S. Same goes for the Ender and other Creality printers, which have other problems but can sometimes print better than the Mark 3S. However, there's one report that has been bugging me where a single gear extruder produced a faint wood grain pattern. This one. It is very very faint and elongated and I'm not sure what's causing it. It's from a snap maker and could come from something about 4 or 5 mm apart I suspect, which could be the little ball bearings inside the idler. It's hard to believe that this pattern is the same as this one and all these, but in fact they're the same. And you will see that they stay consistent for as long as the part is completely vertical, so the extrusion amount is the same for all layers. Scale the part up or down just a little bit and the pattern changes accordingly, following the rule I explained earlier. These patterns are easier to spot with thicker extrusion and on models that look more mathematical and with vertical walls, which is mostly what I print. On organic shapes like minis this will be less obvious, it'll look more like isolated noise so it's harder to spot because it becomes irregular. So now you know why this happened. And knowing this, it's pretty hard to imagine a different approach that could solve it without addressing the root cause. So it doesn't make sense that people claim to have solved it by changing other things. At least in this particular case. Don't trust the internet. There are other issues that may sometimes look similar and can be confused with one another. So if you're getting a wood grain pattern, it doesn't necessarily mean that it's this particular one. There are better potential solutions here, of course. We could have the wheel rotate around the spur gear and not move back and forth. Then it would work with more materials of varying elasticity. Or don't use spur gears in the first place and opt for double helical gears like this which can handle more backlash, are more efficient, they would self-align and would have uniform rotation unlike simple spur gears. At least in theory. After all, I'm a software engineer, not a gear expert, so we'd have to test this theory. Does anyone know how to make these gears physically happen? The only potential issue here is that these are more difficult to manufacture and we know how much companies love to cut costs. But maybe one will step up and make us some gears we can actually use. E3D? Bontek? Anyone? It's just gears, man. Surely someone knows how to make some gears, right? So hopefully it's now a bit more clear why this pattern and these patterns have the same root cause and they're all gone with a simple change of the gears, at least in my case. And I'm actually glad that I had this issue, even though it was frustrating, because now at least we know where it comes from for everyone who has it, which seems to be a lot of people. We have a solution that works with minimal downsides. Unless you can modify your extruder, in which case talk to your favorite extruder manufacturer. That's where your money went. That's all with this pattern. And once you fix it, you'll notice that there's another pattern. And this one almost all printers have. Once you fix the other problems, that is, because this is more faint. You could use the same workflow to figure out where this comes from. But this one's a bit different, so I'll cover it in another video which I'll put on the screen somewhere or in the description once I publish it. Same for my previous video on this topic. Quick note, I just started a Patreon page where you can support my work. It's pretty cool. Until next time, be awesome.